Welcome again to a new lesson of our online course. Because I have received a lot of requests for having a specific course of writing a CV, our course of how to write a CV as the fixed part of business English communication will help you to get involved with the skills and the forms of writing a CV in a professional way. The outline here shows the stage we will take to have our CV written well and accepted by all institutions you apply to. You will also get some tips of writing a CV and know the required structure of a CV. Here is the first stage to start with. We are going to read the format for a CV. A curriculum vitae commonly referred to as CV includes a summary of your educational and academic backgrounds, as well as teaching and research experience, publications, presentation, awards, honors, and affiliations. International employers often expect to read the type of personal information on a curriculum vita that will not be included on a resume. When writing a CV for a graduate school or academia, the personal information included in this curriculum vita template would be omitted. I will explain a little bit what we mean by the last idea from when writing a CV for graduate school or academia until would be omitted. For example, if you want to apply for a university, you are not required to write whether you are married or not, or how many children you have. So the CV must be suitable to the environment, institutions, or the people to whom you are addressing. Okay? Of course, here we will bring up some tips of writing a CV, and our course will be limited to three most rules that is, when writing a CV, there are few helpful rules you should follow. Much you resume or CV to the position. This is most important when writing a resume, but it applies to a CV too. Make sure that you highlight your education, work experience, and skills as they relate to the particular industry or job. In a CV, for example, if you are applying for a job in education, you may want to put your teaching experience at the top of your CV. In a resume, you might include only the work experience that relates directly to the job you are applying for. You can also include keywords from the job description in your resume or CV. This will show the employer that you are an ideal fit for the position. I will be repeating these first rules during our course because many people, especially English students, make this mistake by having written one version and send it to all institutions and companies they find in front of them. In other words, you should have beneficial information as possible to the position you are applying for, as we have said that as they are related to the particular industry job. For example, when we are mentioning your educational and work experience until skills, that's good. The second tip, use a template. You may want to use a template to structure your resume or CV. This will give your application a clear organization, which will help the employer quickly see your qualifications and experience. It is very clarifying to have information from previous templates. You can find a lot of them in the internet, but they must respect the structure we will offer in our course and to have your CV helpful for the employer, as we said before, to recognize and see your qualifications and experience easily. That's good. The last tip we give here is a dating, a dating, and a dating. That is, no matter whether you use a CV or resume, you need to thoroughly edit your document. Make sure that there are no spelling or grammatical errors also, make sure your format is uniform. For example, if you use bullet points in one job description, use bullet point in all your job descriptions. I will explain this point because it's very important. By the time you need to update the information in your CV, which should be written with no mistakes, and also the look of the CV should be well organized and uniform. Okay? I consider this stage as the most important stage in our course because it's very illustrative and more practical.
You may notice we will have a particular sample of my CV which will be divided into three parts in addition to the reference. The first one is contact and personal information which consists of full name and age. I will discuss a little bit about the age. There are some people who write the date and place of birth and I consider as an old thing to do nowadays. Why? because it will make the employer do some efforts to think and calculate how old you are. So try to avoid it, please. For the address, it should be the current one and not the place of birth, because sometimes I found many CVs written with the place of birth and they are applying for another city. And it's quite hard to be selected if the job is occupied in a particular place that is far from your place of birth so try to avoid it please for citizenship and sex which must be written if you apply for something outside your country but if they are used in the same country they are considered as useless but for foreign countries because we have some names used for both male and female for example the Italian male name Andrea is understood as a female name in many languages or hard to distinguish if this is a male or female person such as Chinese names which even me find it hard to understand if that person is male or female also we should write the phone number as well as the email that's good so take this into consideration because they are important some people just write uh, let's say the email and they forget their phone numbers or the telephone and certainly it is considered as a stupid way because you are not going to be informed for that job. For optional personal information, as I said before, is included if they have a purpose in the CV. But for an academic purpose or a particular company, I recommend not to use them. And at the end here we have the object, in which you will state the purpose of your application, just to help the employer Make sure which job you intended to have, especially when there are different job opportunities only in one company. Also, we should take a lot of thought and care about the picture included to the CV, which should be respectful and professional. Not doing some symbols with your hands or laughing uh, while you are taking this picture. So let's apply these things here. We have a personal information, picture, and object that's good I recommend here the name should be bold this is the second part of the CV structure we will tackle education and qualifications in terms of school and university levels as we have here the last three points work experience including any work you have already done such as academic position research and training awards grant received or professional membership these are mentioned only for writer researchers or master and doctor students who have done one of these things but as a postgraduate and graduate student you may have educational qualifications and work experience so let's have to talk about these tips here for educational qualifications you must mention the date when you have received these certificates, the name of the certificate, the name of organization or let's say companies in addition to the place where you have received this certificate or diploma. That's good. For work experience, you have two choices to do. Either to state the year or specific month you have been in a particular job or work as well as the name of the position you have occupied, the name of organization, association or company, in addition to the place as we have here, McNess. Here we have the third part of CV, addressing languages you can speak or write, other skills, as well as interests. And all the things are illustrated here. Languages, for example, I can speak or my language is a native Arabic, I am fluent English, other skills, designing logo using Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, 
great knowledge of presentation software such as Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Teamworking, for interest, reading books, traveling. Some people put a lot of things in these three columns, but they forget they may be asked during the interview about these three things. For example, if he put, I speak Spanish, he will be asked to introduce himself or herself in Spanish. And I still remember a friend who was asked to talk about a little bit about PowerPoints and the benefits towards educational field. In addition to mention some books you have read and give the summaries of it. This is the last step of CV structure and many people may ignore this part and they don't give any attention to it. But let us say that it is used to motivate the employer that you have someone with high rank in position such as previous employers or a teacher who are seeing good words in recommendation letters. So as a student now, if you have a teacher who is seeing good words in an oral way, you must or you should ask him or her to give you a recommendation letter because they will be beneficial in your future career in general, such as mentioning the previous employer or a teacher through a recommendation letter, okay? So as we have here, you can write the date when you receive these letters and in addition uh, to the names of the professor or let's say the teacher you have received from this letter. For me, I have used some fake names to show uh, and illustrate some steps you are going to take if you are writing a CV. And you can state the name of the job that he is taking. Is it teacher or let's say a manager in a particular company in addition to the place where we, you have received or where let's see that person works okay because the potential employer may call that person through the phone okay this is an exercise in which you will make some editing and correction to this CV to make it a well organized and professional paper please pause the video take enough time to have rewrite this CV and play the video as soon as you finish for example two years ago when I was working in a language center and private school I have received so many CVs like this. So the first thing you can notice here is rating phrases like curriculum vita, telephone, nationality, date of birth. By doing so you make the employer look stupid to recognize you people as a CV or the phone number. So you should not do it anymore and be specific to the point for example the organization of the personal information is not that good okay even the date of birth should be written specifically so instead of it you can simply put the age okay so here is an acceptable way for example as i said before if i am addressing a particular place like rabat and write in Morocco it's quite stupid so I just write Rabat if the job simply does not require some specific nationality so it's enough just to write Rabat so instead of writing your profile I just write the object okay the second thing that can be seen in work experience and educational qualifications is the organization of it and we have a remark that the date should be used at the first line for reading a CV easily. The second thing that you can mention here is the name and the place where you get these certificates. And as I said before, the mistake of using the previous templates from the internet makes you to write like a BA in business study. So for example, if we talk a Bachelor of Arts, does it include let's say business of course no so to correct it we should see BS or Bachelor of Science because business is included in this type of bachelor as we have in the shown picture so let's correct this second part here I put a specific month of job experience the name of the job and the organization and the place okay so whereas the educational qualifications I just put the years 
along with the name of the certificates, the organizer, and the place. That's good. In the third part of languages and interest, we need to make a slight changes like starting clearly the interest or activity you like to do. Here is a suggestions like languages and I put just the names of the interest. So the thing here for you is to try to see which one of the two is clear to read and likely to be acceptable. And I insist that you should consider your CV as a, a green card or let's say a permission card or the first impression of you to give to the potential employer. You are asked in over to you activity to write a CV to a particular job of your speciality or other things you like to do. I decide not to keep you limit by stating a particular job, so but to have a lot of responses from you, imagine any job that comes into your mind and write a CV for it. You can share it with us by sending it to our email that you will find in the description below. This is the end of our course. We hope you have learned much of the skills in writing your CV, but this is not enough. You must start from now on to write your CV in English version. And because we try to simplify our courses, you must be learning and enjoying it. So please wait for the next episode and thank you so much.